Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cecilia Campillo. I'm here representing El Pueblo Clinic's TCE program. As you may or may not know, TCE is the industrial solvent that harmed the health of many people living in the area of South Tucson around the industrial parks. Uh, the clinic is, has been addressing the health care needs for five years. Currently, we are um, serving uh, over 800 patients. The clinic is located at 101 West Irvington Road. As usual, we have a special guest. Our very special guest today is uh, Dr. Shauna McIsaac. She's our medical director, and I'd like to welcome her. Thank you, Cecilia. And um, I'd like uh, you to tell uh, our public, uh, Dr. McIsaac, a little bit about the uh, El Pueblo Clinic El and Pueblo the work you do. Okay. El Pueblo Clinic is a community health clinic that serves southwest Tucson. It's located in El Pueblo Neighborhood Center Complex, which is located at the southwest corner of Irvington and 6th Avenue. We serve predominantly a Hispanic population and largely, as you mentioned before, we serve over, uh, over 800 patients who have been exposed to TCE in the, in the past mm -hmm. um, over 40 years. Mm -hmm. That was like starting in the mid-40s, as I uh, recall, uh, when the problem began. Yeah, on the south of Tucson, um, up, up till 1981 Correct. when ponds were, when the wells were closed. Right. Mm -hmm. TCE or trichloroethylene was one of it's a mechanical solvent, a degreaser that was used used by Hughes Aircraft over a 40 year period that spanned up until 1981 when it was discovered that TCE had contaminated the groundwater mm -hmm. that served the southwest part of Tucson. And at that point, the ground, the wells were closed, um, and the contaminated water from those wells was stopped serving to people. Um, and a, a number of lawsuits came out of that, and in some, some of the results of that were that some funding through the county and through the state became available to provide health care to people ha who had been exposed to TCE through the groundwater. Yeah, absolutely correct. And uh, Dr. McKaiser, uh, what is the TCE program in, in your expertise, and uh, what was the necessity for it having uh, been started? Um, the TCE program is a program that's funded, as I mentioned, both through the county and the state. It's made available to people who were exposed to trichloroethylene in the groundwater and who don't have any insurance or any other source of health and primary health care coverage. And so the funding was designed in order to provide health care coverage for people who'd been exposed. Um, the, the program is important in, in that in addition to providing health care coverage to people who've been exposed, it also provides education and it also provides an avenue for collecting data on the, the effects of chronic low dose exposure to a, uh, to a toxin such as TCE. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the um, keeping of that information in a demographic form. Uh, what purpose will that serve in the future, Dr. Dr. McIsaac? Um, a number of purposes. The first one is that we currently have a population of over 800 patients who have been seen under the TCE program. Mm -hmm. The 800 patients that we've seen We've collected data on them regarding their age, sex, the time exposure, the, the length of years that they were exposed to TCE, and in addition, the symptoms or diagnoses that they've presented with. The, our hopes are that what we need to do with that data is to perform some epidemiological studies in order to quantify that information and look at the, look at the trends that that information provides so that we can start to begin, or to continue actually, um, on the path of research in terms of what TCE does and how it affects people. And I th think something I want to mention here that's really important and I think is an extremely important question in our society today is what is the effect of chronic exposure to a low dose of an environmental toxin such as TCE or other environmental toxins? And I think that's really important because in our society we're seeing an increase in rates of cancer and in addition an increase in rates of chronic disease. And we don't have a easily or obvious explanation to these, but I think a real important question is, 
is there any correlation with the increase in pollutants and increase in environmental toxins that we're being exposed to over decades now at this point and as they increase they're very low levels but we're being exposed to them our bodies are being exposed to them at increasing the long periods of time right and uh, that project uh, is an absolute uh, need uh, as part of the uh, work that is currently being done at El Pueblo Clinic addressing the health care but further uh, going into an, uh, what they call an epi study mm -hmm. uh, to determine uh, causal effect between the health and TCE. Exactly. I'm um, so happy to hear that uh, that you're focusing on that on that uh, particular avenue that is of great importance uh, to the TCE program and for the benefit of the community, uh, Dr. Yeah. McCarthy. We definitely have a number of, we have over the over 800 patients. Mm -hmm. We have the information. What we need now is to find sources of funding, mm -hmm. either at a county level, a federal level, um, or a grant source in mm -hmm. order to fund the epidemiological study that, that mm -hmm. is so important so to do important. with this information. That's wonderful. And as I understand, uh, there are uh, doctors uh, in the community that are interested in this particular project, and especially mm -hmm. Dr. Abrams, that's yep. been in the forefront of, of this issue. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. So he, that's wonderful to hear. What are some of the effects of TCE, uh, Dr. McIsaac? TCE, or trichloroethylene, has been studied already, and some of the effects that have been seen, oftentimes in larger doses, um, so again, we're looking at um, a little bit shorter term, larger dose type of effect. Um, our cancers, a number of different cancers such as leukemia, mm -hmm. testicular cancers, um, bone cancers, in addition lupus, um, SLE it's sometimes called, and r rheumatic, uh, rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. are two additional um, diagnoses that are frequently seen with exposure to TCE. TCE is a toxic to our neurological system, can slow neuro our neurological system, and there's been um, one of the ways of affecting, of assessing the effect of TCE is called the blink reflex. And so if someone has a slowed blink reflex, mm -hmm. it can represent an exposure mm -hmm. to TCE. But again, most of the studies and one of the difficulties in assessing the effect of TCE in particular and other environmental toxins is that we're, we're assessing the effect of a toxin that has been ex that people have been exposed to over a long period of time at a very low dose. Mm -hmm. And I think in allopathic medicine, we tend to be very good at assessing and evaluating the effect of something at a larger dose mm -hmm. um, in a shorter period of time, so something more acute. I think it's going to be a new arena that I think is really going to be growing, mm -hmm. um, looking at chronic disease, what causes it, and specifically what is the effect of long-term exposure to mm -hmm. low-level toxins. Mm -hmm. And TCE is on the one of the chemicals on the forefront of that. I think another one is tobacco, mm -hmm. and we're really beginning to see the effects of years of exposure to, to, to smoke mm -hmm. with our rates of lung cancer and with the research that's been done on that. Mm -hmm. But even that is a more obvious connection than mm -hmm. the connection with TCE or with other environmental toxins. Mm -hmm. I sense uh, a little bit of excitement in the way that you're presenting this and something that you're looking forward to continuing to study and to be a part of that uh, epi study as it's called. And um, I only hope that you have that support from the sources that are going to be able to help uh, our public clinic uh, meet those needs. Me too. In the future. <laughs> I think we will. Uh -huh. And um, I also wanted to ask you, Regarding congenital uh, problems and abnormalities, mm -hmm. and especially in the children and babies, right? Um, can you expound on, on that? Or yeah, explain? TCE has been linked to, in fact, one of the first um, connections that was made with TCE and the contamination in the groundwater here in Tucson yeah. was through congenital heart defects that were noted um, in a number of babies mm -hmm. that were notice, it was noticed that they, a number of these children came from, I think it was two zip code areas. Mm -hmm. And so it was on further um, research into that phenomenon th that led us to the connection between t exposure to TCE and congenital birth defects. And then um, 
there was a couple of research studies that were done to follow up on that that proved that connection. I believe uh, that was a Goldberg study. Dr. Uh, Goldberg, That's uh, right. a local doctor from the University of Arizona, conducted right. that study. Right. Very interesting and, and very important to be uh, aware of, of uh, his study, which, by the way, uh, is available at the TCE uh, library at El Pueblo. Uh, just by uh, asking for a copy of that study, people are can avail themselves to, to that study. That, as well as um, the neurological and the SLE, the lupus study that Dr. Uh, Kay Kilburn wrote as well. Right. And you've seen those, uh, those studies, uh, I'm sure, Dr. McKaysen. Um The effect uh, on the health uh, that TCE caused uh, is of great concern to all of us that work there, but more uh, especially in the medical area there. Uh, tell us a little bit about kind of the work that, that we're conducting there within the program. Once a, pro a person is brought to the program and then taken in to, okay. to be seen. The program is designed to provide primary medical care um, for, um, just to reiterate it, for patients, for people who've been exposed to TCE in the demographic area mm -hmm. that we're serving and that was um, contaminated uh, through the groundwater. One, any patient, although um, we've been, this is the fifth year that the program has been in existence, um, we are still continuing to enroll new patients. So it, the criteria for enrollment reflect the length of period that a person lived within the area that was contaminated. So even if a person moved away and now is coming back to Tucson or to the southwest area of Tucson, they can come and be enrolled in the program. It's, mm -hmm. It reflects the 40-year period that the groundwater was contaminated and people were exposed through that. Mm -hmm. Once a person is enrolled in the program, and it's again to cover people who have no other source of insurance and so to provide health care for them, once they're enrolled through mm -hmm. the clinic, they receive primary health care. We have primary, our primary care physicians, our family practice physicians, family practice nurse practitioners, and internal medicinists, mm -hmm. internists. Mm -hmm. um, and we provide primary health care through, through those providers. In addition, the program uh, pays up to a certain amount per referral so that we're also able to refer patients out to specialists that they need or out for testing that they need. Mm -hmm. That's the clinical piece, and I guess in addition I want to add to that that we also work with um, patient education, which I think is extremely important to not just to focus on a symptom or to focus on a disease, but instead to really focus on the person as a whole person and especially a, a number, what we've noticed is that a number of these patients have chronic diseases. And a chronic disease not only affects the patient, but affects the entire family that they're within and, and really the entire community. So we're, we try and take the, enough time with the patient to, to discuss with them patient education regarding the process or symptoms, disease that they have, and then to enlist the support of their family as they deal with this diagnosis and then as their family also is dealing with it. There's another layer of education that we, that we encourage, and that's community education. We have a number of lectures that um, elucidate some of the diagnoses that we've noticed um, that come up with the exposure to CCE, such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, in addition, we've had some lectures on diabetes, hypertension, which are very common mm -hmm. in the in population that we serve. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, we are, have one coming up in a few days on arthritis. Yes. The other layer on top of that is conferences, and we mm -hmm. serve, we have conferences that discuss TCE, that bring the latest information on TCE, the latest research and findings to the community and to the providers that are serving the community. That's wonderful. That's like uh, what the uh, quote today is saying, empowering uh, the patient as well as the community. Right. And, and that is uh, very important. When you know what affects you and you're able to deal with, with the uh, health problem better than if you were to be left with a question as to what is causing you to feel ill or not well. But uh, I think the, the clinic uh, and your department, the doctors that work under your direction, uh, take the time and see everybody as an individual, which is so important for a clinic. 
And believe me, the compliments uh, come to my department about the work that's being conducted by the doctors there. Thanks, Cecilia. Um, I have a, another a question regarding um, a, a little bit more about El Pueblo Clinic because uh, you're involved, of course, in the area where TCE uh, health care is concerned, but you also wear many other hats as far as being a director in many other programs. What are the other, what other uh, programs occur at El Pueblo Clinic? What do we have? Right, the TCE program is one of a number of programs mm -hmm. that we offer at El Pueblo Clinic. And it, one of the missions of El Pueblo Clinic is to serve the entire community, so that's from pediatrics through elderly, and to serve with primary care and along with education. The, um, in addition to the TCE program, the other programs that we offer are um, Kids Care, which is a program of and I guess I want to back up and say, in addition to wanting to providing health care for all ages, the community that we serve, there's a large population that doesn't have health insurance and so doesn't have access to health care of any kind um, through being uninsured. And so we really work hard to bring programs that avail themselves to people um, having access to health care and to insurance. One of these programs is Kids Care, which is a recently started program providing health insurance for children. And the goal of the program, which is a state-funded program, is to provide insurance for children who have no insurance. Um, Wonderful. It is. And it's, there's... It's a much needed um, pr uh, provision, you might say, that uh, the state is giving uh, families and uh, we we did we do have someone here that's a very special guest as well uh, her name is uh, Margarita Ramirez and we'll be talking to Margarita uh, later in the program about the outreach work she's doing um, to spread the word in the community about TCE the program we have the service we provide and all the other things that you just mentioned kids care and and uh, well woman um, Right. program. We have and I want to ask you about the Well Woman Good. and also the um, uh, premium sharing program which is so important for families that have an income but can't afford a high premium. So uh, Margarita will com come in and, and talk to us in a few minutes but tell us a little bit about the Well Woman program that's so important because it ties into a lot of the TCE problems having to do with the can breast um, cancers and yeah. It's a, right, and mm -hmm. it is a separate program from the TCE program. It's a program that's a state-funded grant mm -hmm. that provides ma mammograms and mm -hmm. pap smears and a complete well woman exam mm -hmm. annually to women 50 years of age and older who have no other health insurance. So they can call the program, they can call the clinic and sign up for a well woman exam mm -hmm. uh, and they receive free care for those um, exams. Mm -hmm. That's uh, another very much needed uh, type of service that El Pueblo Clinic provides. Tell us uh, the address again and, and the telephone numbers perhaps for people okay. that might want to be. Okay, uh, the um, El Pueblo Clinic is at 101 mm -hmm. West Irvington. It's the corner of 6th Avenue and Irvington Road, mm -hmm. the southwest corner. The phone number of the clinic is 573-0096 mm -hmm. and um, we also have a hotline number, which is 748-746. Do you know the rest of it? 8828. 8828, thank you. <laughs> um, I had it written down. So Good. That's <laughs> Thanks. Um, it's a very well-rounded information that you've given us, Dr. McIsaac, and I really appreciate uh, your presence today. Uh, you took time from your busy schedule to meet with us on important information that we want to bring to our community. And again, for that, I thank you. That's and thank you and we much. hope that you can come back and during another series of our programs to chat with us and to uh, inform us and educate us on what's going, what's happening at El Pueblo Clinic. Thanks I'd love again. to. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, now we're going to turn to uh, Margarita Ramirez. Hello. As we mentioned, uh, Margarita is, is um, coordinator of the outreach program. Uh, she works uh, there at the clinic uh, from 8 to about 4. Um, so, uh, in some days are busier than others, Margarita, as you know. Tell us a little bit about your project and how you got started and 
what it is that you're doing for the community. Well, upon the direction of you, Cecilia, mm -hmm. and Dr. McIsaac, as we talked about the Kids Care Program, it's for those who don't fit into the income bracket of access, and then they get a letter saying, well, we, you're not uh, eligible for access. So we get them coming into our office sometimes saying, we are not eligible. So we give them this. Because of their income. Because of their limit. income. Mm -hmm. So we give them this application. We have it in English and in Spanish. And we assist them in filling it out. All it is is just two pages. Just a two page. This is the rest is information. And all it asks is for one month's proof of income and social security numbers on the children. One of the other things we're finding that persons are denied because they're undocumented and this, that does not ask for anything on the parent. The main objective is to get children the health care that is they, these, that's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. what are the, that's needed. Can you comment on that, Cecilia, that maybe, isn't that what it is? I'm trying to make sure that all these children are taken care of and are well. Absolutely, and that's the, uh, that's the thrust of the program. Uh, but as you mentioned, unfortunately, if uh, the children are not here uh, with uh, criteria, documented criteria, um, there's a very good chance that they will not get that uh, insurance. However, you know, we, we are um, gearing our, our information to those children that um, have their social security cards, that the parents are here, um, and uh, that so that uh, when you go out to present the program, those children that qualify can come in and register at our clinic. And if there's anything immediate, I let you know and you get a hold of Darlene. Mm -hmm. What is Darlene? It's our nurse. Our Darlene head nurse. Mm -hmm. Our head nurse, and they take it upon your, you all decide whether the child needs to be seen. So we don't turn around away anyone. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about our clinic. If there's a dire emergency for a child, Right. It's taken care Tell of. Tell us a, a little bit about the premium sharing program premium for 19-year-old uh, and above of ages. Okay, it's based on a three months income. If let's say they weren't working one of those months, all they need to do is write a letter, but you need to have every paycheck stub and their social security proof of identification, and it's based on their income, so they pay a premium. And according then, to according their According to earnings. their income, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's again for children 19 years and so of age and over. And over, and sometimes within a household, I'll find maybe a daughter living with the parents, and the parents, there isn't any insurance, or okay. they haven't had insurance for more than six months. Mm -hmm. They are eligible. They will have to have been off any other insurance mm -hmm. for six months mm -hmm. to be eligible, and we try to enroll them, and it's based on their income solely. Mm -hmm. We have about four minutes left, and I uh, just want you to um, identify the areas that you're working in the uh, and, and pro possibly the places where you've been or where you expect to be in well, the coming months. Within the past couple of weeks, I've been, I've had a, a lot of concentration on the Liberty Head Start. And just out of maybe about 20 parents, I came up and staff, questions about TCE, applications, uh, premium sharing, kids care. Uh, maybe others who have no coverage at all asking, what are we going to do? So I ask them, save a little bit of money. I mean, that doesn't sound right. Save something and we're not going to turn you away. Mm -hmm. They'll work with you. I, I let them know that you or Darlene will work with them and we'll see what we can do. Uh, you can find me at Southwest probably the, this coming Saturday. Southwest? Uh, uh, Southwest at Valencia. Market? Southwest it? Market, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. Valencia and 12th Avenue. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you'll see me walking around with flyers on putting them on your door things mm -hmm. or, or on the bus. Mm -hmm. I even give people things on the bus. If you see me, I'll be glad to do or even help you fill out the application. Our office helps anyone fill out the application. Mm -hmm. It's in the, and during English and Spanish, the premium sharing and the kids care. And you can call any one of us, myself, Carmen, Linda, and Cecilia, and we'd be glad to I help Give them you. our number. 746-8828 okay. or 573-0096. Thank you, Margarita. And again, thank you, uh, Dr. McIsaac, for being here today. We will uh, be back with another series of programs uh, to inform you and to uh, help you understand the work that we are conducting at El Pueblo Clinic. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia.